Hi, and welcome to a drawing video. I'm a traditional artist who's been drawing traditionally for about 10 years, and I have maybe a handful of years of digital art experience, if you could call it that. I don't really draw with digital art ever, and it's really only been in the past year or two that I've really tried to make some more art with it. And I feel like I had a little bit of a breakthrough with this piece of Claudine from Monster High. Um, so I hope you guys enjoy the process of me learning how to draw with that. I started with a traditional sketch here that I created in my sketchbook. I wanted to create fan art of Claudine from Monster High, obviously, and I wanted to do it in somewhat of a style of like Gil Elgren and his pinup poses. I am a huge fan of that art style and I think it's really influenced a lot of my art in the past, including another Monster High piece I did of Draculaura last year. I really enjoy pinup pieces in that style and I wanted to kind of emulate that with Claudine. I've always struggled with digital art for pretty much as long as I've interacted with it and so my goal for this new year is to improve on that a lot and get to a point where I'm really comfortable with it in a similar way that I'm comfortable with traditional art and sketching. And by the way, Happy New Year guys! I'm recording this a day or two after New Year's and I think this is going to come out the first week of New Year's. So, Happy New Year's! I didn't get a chance to say that in any of my other videos, but I hope everybody had a great holiday season and chances are a lot of you aren't even watching this even close to the New Year's, but for the new people who are here in January with me, Happy New Year's! I hope we all have a great and productive time this year improving our art skills. I'm so excited to see how much we grow this year. And on that note, I had another thing that I wanted to celebrate with you guys. Thank you so much for the support that you've shown me over the past month. I honestly don't have any words. I think as of as of today right now, my sketchbook tour has about 60,000 views and I have about 2,000 subscribers and I'm just over the moon about it. <laughs> I applied for monetization last week and I was approved yesterday. So that means that within a month, about three and a half weeks to be exact, I went from publishing my first video to being fully monetized, which is just absolutely insane. And I, I honestly have never heard of that happening, especially for an artist. So truly, truly, thank you so much. I had a kind of lonely end to the year with the hacking incident that I'm sure everybody is so sick and tired of hearing at this point. But to be met with such a amazing community so quickly on another platform is just it blows my mind so really thank you so much <laughs> i'm so excited for this year and to keep making new things and i would honestly really like to make a video about my experience with getting monetized in a month as well as like my first payout when that happens later this year so if you guys are interested in that video just like let me know i really want to make videos that are coherent on my channel, that kind of make sense to be around each other, but I also want to experiment a little bit and try to delve into like different topics in the art community that that you guys might be interested in. So please, I always love talking to you guys, just let me know if you have any ideas. So here I'm finally getting into the inking stage, and I think inking is one of those things that trips me up the most in art, especially digital art. I love inking, it's my favorite stage of the process, and it feels like there's something missing from my art when I take that out of digital pieces. I've heard so much advice that not inking is the way to go with art and how to make it easier on digital art, but I still really struggle with not having line art in my pieces on digital art, so for now I've just been trying to work with that and see what I can make of it. I really like this gel pen brush, I think right now I'm using the default gel pen brush in Procreate, but eventually I ended up downloading just like a random gel pen brush that I found online for free. I think overall the default gel pen brush had the most amount of similarity to the one that I ended up using. It's just that I was not a fan of how thin the lines were outside of my control and I was having a hard time working around that, but I do really like the splotchiness of the gel pen brush. I use gel pens for my traditional art as well as Sharpies and I think the splotchiness of both of those pens really add a lot to my style and give it 
what I consider my style. I think using a gel pen brush here really helped me articulate my style a little better in the traditional medium, but I can still see a lot of ways where I was just working way harder than I needed to, and I think in the future I really want to work towards erasing line art from my digital art process as a whole. It by far takes up the most amount of time. In every single digital piece I have, it takes up the most amount of time. And it doesn't really even result in an easier process for me later on when I'm coloring because I still have to go in and define all of the values anyways. But one of my favorite tools that really gave me a breakthrough with learning digital art was the selection brush. I have been using that for coloring and shading for the past couple of pieces that I've made and especially with this piece I think I had a breakthrough with shading hair. I always avoid shading hair and coloring hair in digital. I think that's usually when I finally give up on digital is when I have to color the hair because it just doesn't make sense to me and it doesn't come out the way I want and I don't like giving it that overly airbrushed feel that you see in a lot of new digital art styles, but with the selection brush I'm able to add in chunky highlights and shades and it just is so much easier to work with than trying to manually add in those color values myself. Everybody has a different line art preference and for me I really like a huge variation in line depth. I like the scratchiness of lines, I love the splotchiness of the gel pen brush, and you can see me really just choosing to sketch out my line art and then slowly refine it using the eraser, building it up and erasing it down over and over and over again until I get to a thickness that I really like. I can see so many different issues with that process. It takes way longer than it probably needs to. and. I'm looking forward to trying out new avenues in the future. This is such a headache to do every single time, but I love how it looks and I don't know how to do it any other way. So it's kind of just this digital art limbo that I am like eternally stuck in. I built my computer in 2017 or 2018, I believe. So I guess <laughs> five years ago at this point, my computer is really old and I was gifted a Wacom Intuos tablet that first or second Christmas that I had that computer and I downloaded CSP Clip Studio Paint to run with it. And I'm not saying that you have to buy CSP online, I'm just saying you can find it and you don't need a credit card in order to download it, that's all I'll say. My first experience with digital art was the Wacom Intuos with Clip Studio Paint and Though I love Clip Studio Paint, the Wacom was just not a great experience for me. I, I absolutely hated it. And I know that touchscreen tablets can get kind of a bad rap, but they're a really good affordable tool for people who are trying to get into digital art. I think my Intuos tablet was like 50 bucks. It was really not an expensive gift for my parents. Because of my background with traditional art, drawing hand to paper for so long, at that point it had been a handful of years since I started drawing, it was really difficult for me to translate that into a touchpad where I wasn't watching my hand draw something. I was watching the computer screen and then using my hand autonomously to draw to that screen. It was just so disconnected for me and I wasn't a fan of that process. I never really put in the time to get used to it. I kind of just gave up because it was so difficult. I did create a few pieces with it here and there over the next three or four years, but I still have the Intuos tablet, I still have the Clip Studio Paint, I just don't use it. It's so much easier for me to just struggle my way through traditional art. It's something that, it's a struggle that I know how to manage and digital art just was never it for me, I never had the motivation. Once I started seriously considering pursuing art as a career in late 2021, and getting into posting on social media more with Instagram and TikTok, I had a new interest in digital art because it is kind of easier to create designs and ideas that are really crisp and clean compared to traditional art. In traditional art, there's like a higher threshold of how easy it is to make a mistake that you can't really come back from. And overall, I think the workspace and process for traditional art can be way more lengthy than it has to be with digital art, at least for my style. 
So I had kind of a vested interest in relearning how to do digital art for social media and product purposes. And luckily at the time, my partner had an iPad that he had been using for notes at school, but had kind of stopped using. It's the iPad in this video. <laughs> so I kind of hijacked it and I downloaded Procreate and it was just so much easier than using a touchpad. Oh my God, I, I so prefer the iPad. The iPad has its own issues, but I've been able to make so many more pieces just in the past year of using it compared to my five or so years of having an Intuos tablet and CSP. Anyways, back to the design at hand. I wanted to draw the Generation 3 design of Claudine that was inspired actually in part by Izzyaz's video on Monster High doll controversies. <laughs> I know that's like so, that's so niche, but if you love Izzy like I do, then her videos really inspire me to draw um, all the time. And I wanted to do a Monster High pinup pose of Claudine, and I thought that her video would be a great, I, a great way for me to get inspiration on which designs. But I ultimately decided on the G3 design, which is the newest one. I really love this new design. I think a lot of us know this update for finally including some plus size representation with Draculaura. I really like Claudine's design, but I didn't really enjoy so much of the heavy emphasis on like the nerdy look that I think kind of went out of style like seven years ago. And I also didn't really like how they bleached and relaxed her hair. And then they kind of whitewashed her skin as well. So I tried to fix a little bit of that in this drawing by darkening her skin, darkening her hair, and just trying to give the nerdy look a little bit more chic glam to it. <laughs> I tried my best, but I actually really like her design and I had a great time drawing this piece. I would like to ask, what are your guys' favorite parts about digital art or the digital art process? I talk a lot to traditional artists or artists with other mediums, but I don't actually talk a lot to digital artists just because it's not really a medium that I know all too well. So what are your favorite go-to processes? Are there any favorite stages in the process that you like? Anything that you learned doing digital art that really changed the game for you? I know for me, using selection, chromatic aberration, and color filtering has really leveled up my art skills in digital, but I have a long ways to go with creating like a streamlined process that uh, I can reliably use. So if you have any advice or would like to share your experiences with your digital art journey, I would absolutely love to hear that. In other news, I just got done with my quote unquote winter break. I don't really have winter breaks anymore now that I work part time but I tried to give myself one so that I can enjoy winter break with my partner who is in grad school right now. So I doubled up on my video production the week before Christmas, which was the day in the life video and this video, um, getting all that filming done two weeks ago so that I could have last week off. Now this is my first week back and it's Tuesday right now and I'm so tired. <laughs> I keep messing up my sleep schedule whenever I have a weekend or a week off, and this was really bad. We watched so many movies and we just slept the whole time and just laid on the couch. It was so bad, but I needed the break. <laughs> and this week is so busy, I'm glad that I had such a lazy week last week. A lot of the filming for this piece as well as the composition of the piece itself was inspired by Aoops on YouTube. I really love her drawings and videos, and she's another artist that has recently um, become more popular online. I really love her style and wanted to emulate a little bit of that composition in this piece, and I have to credit her with, with that inspiration for this. She has great videos, they're super relaxing. I really like watching them while drawing myself. I don't really have as much to talk about this time as compared to my fairy draw with me video. So I think for now I'm just gonna let you guys enjoy the piece with some music 
maybe have a little bit of ambiance if you're drawing along to this video. But let me know in the comments if you prefer voiceover, kind of like a podcast throughout the video, or if you kind of like the, the music and quietness. So I'll just let you guys experience that.
you have magic.
Finishing up the piece, I wanted to say a thank you for watching this far. I really had a great time learning <laughs> more about digital art in this piece and I'm excited for my future drawings. I still think there's a little bit of stiffness to the art, which is so frustrating to deal with in digital art, but this one feels a lot more alive and a lot more like my style and I was really happy with how it came out. If you really like this piece, I have it available as a print on my shop. I should have that linked down below, but as always, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time.